Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me today. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, a passage that some have called one of the greatest passages, literary passages that Paul ever penned in the New Testament. Let's see what that's all about today. Most of you know when you've been to a Christian wedding, you've heard this passage over and over and over again, referring to marriage. But guess what? If you put it in context, it's not talking about marriage at all. Marriage is only a sliver of some of the things that 1 Corinthians 13 is talking about. The whole issue is the way that the folks at Corinth were misusing spiritual gifts. And so within that, Paul inserts this particular chapter. He just finished chapter 12 as we, we bring together some of the truths of how giftedness is supposed to operate in the church. And it wasn't working correctly at Corinth, so he's got to point out that there's something you're missing when it comes to your spiritual giftedness. Now, he begins by saying, if I speak human or angelic tongues but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Let you know that the issue of tongues is a big deal in this particular church, and there are some problems with that. As one commentator puts it, it's uh, tragic that in many churches today, as in the one in ancient Corinth, the love that is basic to Christian character doesn't characterize the membership or the ministry. Love was missing in Corinth. Spiritual gifts were present. We hear that back in the very first chapter. Right doctrine, for the most part, was present. We hear that in chapter 11, verse 2. But love was absent. Throughout history, it seems that the church has found it difficult to be loving. It's easier to be orthodox than to be loving. It's easier to be active in church work than to be loving. Yet the supreme characteristic that God demands of his people is love. Well, with that in mind, as you read this chapter, remember, this is not just about the, the newlywed couple that's getting hitched this weekend. No, no, no. This is about how you and I are supposed to operate in the church when it comes to everything. Love's got to be the motivating factor. We sing about it all the time. We sing about oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Love seems to be at the, the corner of the, the cornerstone of everything we do in Christianity because the Bible says, for God so loved that he sent his son. So with that thought in mind, we've got to ask ourselves, what is the key motivating factor for us? And you see, because our modern society has made love an accident instead of an intention, it seems to me like we've perhaps lost our perspective no, love is not a ditch that you fall into or a tree that you fall out of. You know, people will say, I, I fell in love. I, you can't help who you fall in love with. You will not find that kind of attitude toward love anywhere in the scripture. Love is a choice. It's a decision that you make to put someone else in front of yourself. It's something that is conscious. It's not something that's magical that fell out of a you know, star that fell out of the sky and hit you on the head. It's not a, an arrow shot from Cupid's bow. Friends, love is a decision. And as we read these passages of Scripture, we will see exactly what that does to church ministry. Now, the next thing he says in verse 2 is that if I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge... If I have all faith so that I can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions and I give over my body in order to boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It is not boastful. It is not arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking is not irritable, and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. I'm going to stop right there at that particular period because we need to do some explaining on the next passage, but I think you've got the point here. Love, as the Apostle Paul says, is the key to your church ministry. It's the key to everything that you do. 
It's not just something we talk about when it comes to relationships among the folks that are dating or getting married. Love is what makes the church work. Without it, we are a failure. And he points out that without it, the things we do don't even matter. Got great preaching going on in your church, but there's no love, you're, you're nothing. Uh, got great musical programs, sounds really great, spectacular even. Good light show, lots of smoke on stage this weekend, but you don't have love. Paul says you're nothing, and you gain nothing by it. These are strong words, my friends, and these words apply to how we're doing church in the 21st century, even more than all the things that we want in recognizing the spectacular. If you got all your social media together, if you got your website up and running, if you got all the things happening that are supposed to happen, but you're not demonstrating love in the church, if love's not the motivating factor for everything you do, then Paul says, you have nothing and you gain nothing. Powerful words from the apostle this morning. Words that I hope will strike home at every one of our hearts. You know, Clarence Drummond wrote that book, The Greatest Thing in the World, all about this chapter of scripture about love. And if we don't understand that it is the greatest thing in the world, then we miss the point. We wouldn't even be here if God had not loved us in spite of our sin. You see, God has every reason in the world to hate us, to destroy us, to judge us. But instead, he chose love. He chose to send his son to die on the cross for our sins, the greatest act of love in all of history. How do we respond? By loving one another, even as he loved us. Well, thanks for joining me this morning. We'll talk more about love tomorrow and how it works in the church, hopefully, and hopefully we'll see that it's the secret to having a great ministry. It's the secret to having a great life. Well, God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow right here as we wake up in God's word.